Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at my D17 Series 1 live hydraulics slash loader project. It's all done. I know I skipped a few steps, but let's take a look. So there she is in all her glory. The, the plan was to make videos as I was constructing the whole thing, but I was making so many design changes, especially in this area, that I just couldn't keep up with the videos. So consider it more of a before and after. With that being said, um, I'm going to cover the whole thing, everything that I did. So let's take a closer look. All right. Here is the main area that gave me trouble. This is my hydraulic pump mount slash generator bracket. So as you can see, I moved the generator up top and I have my new hydraulic pump below that. And the reason I did that was I felt that if anything were to ever spring a leak on this pump, it wouldn't be dripping on the generator. Also made routing the hoses a little bit easier. So this is a pump I had laying around. It's a two-stage gear pump. I forget what exactly the specs on it were, but I think it's around 20 gallons a minute. And I wanted to go with a higher gallons per minute pump because the old tractors have fairly low RPMs, so it's 20 gallons a minute at 3,000 RPMs, but this tractor only gets up to 1650, so I still wanted to be able to have some speed on the loader. required modifications was to add in this new crank pulley. This is off of a Series 4 that I got from my Alice Chalmers parts guy slash boneyard and it adds on this second pulley groove so that I can power the hydraulic pump off the rear pulley and the water pump slash generator off the front pulley. So one of the problems you're probably already seeing based on the bad camera angles is it's pretty hard to get at. And I would agree, if this was a stock piece from Alice Chalmers, I'd be pretty angry at the engineers who came up with this. For example, moving the pump out requires small hands and many wrenches, but it works. If I find myself needing to constantly adjust the belt, it's gonna be back to the drawing board, but we'll see about that. Another problem encountered was this, there is a plug for a passage here that just constantly interfered with this governor linkage. So how do we take care of that? Technology of course. So now instead of being a hex head bolt, it's almost a flush mount with an Allen key in the top. Another problem was this pump, the output was up here. So again, back to the drawing board, we put a brass plug in there, drill the new output line there. So that was where the majority of the problems lied. And once that got in and the sheet metal of the hood was back on, the process went much smoother. As far as the loader arms go, I don't have a particular brand name off of these. It kind of looks like a set of do-alls I had off of a Farmall M. So maybe, I'm not 100% sure. The mounting brackets are very different, um, but the other set I had was more of like a universal mount. And I actually had them on this tractor, but it just looked really hokey. This is the right color and the, the brackets are much cleaner, especially where they bolt up to the frame rails. And in the front, we got two big three quarter inch bolts. Um, <clears throat> on the other side, I have to put one in yet, just because I wanted to shorten one of them up a little bit because it was sticking out far. So that's why there's only one on the other side right now. So this loader came off of a Case 430 which I don't believe had a drop axle 
don't quote me on that. I don't know a lot about cases, but in order to get the brackets bolted up correctly, I made these mounts here out of four by eight uh, rectangular tubing. And that way it can just bolt up to the axle uh, while keeping the brackets level. Overall, good solid loader. I got a good deal on it. Uh, hydraulic cylinders aren't leaking. It's It'll stay up like that all night if I leave it. Uh, it looks like there's fluid everywhere. That's just from bleeding the lines out. It was a mess. So over here, pardon my hydraulic lines. Uh, this is just a 10 gallon air tank that I got from Summit Racing. And I'm using that as a hydraulic reservoir. Now you might be saying to yourself, Jack, T17s already have a hydraulic reservoir. Yeah. Doesn't hold a lot. So what I've done here is I've tied the old reservoir in with the new reservoir to more than double my capacity. So another thing that happened here was this bar that I ran from loader arm to loader arm to mount my tank interfered with the bosses for the traction booster which would link up to the drawbar spring here. So I made a new plate that just eliminated all of that because the old hydraulic pump isn't even in there anymore so that I would have even more oil capacity in there. And last but not least to note on tanks is I made a plug for where the dipstick went should the hydraulic level rise above the top of the old reservoir. And on the back end of things since I took the belly pump out I removed the line that came from that and just tied the three point in with the new auxiliary function valve. So for controls I have a brand hydraulic joystick here. It has float and rapid tip, all the, the good stuff from a modern loader control. It's being fed directly from the hydraulic pump. And then the auxiliary valves for the back and the three point are being fed from the power beyond. I have three valves on my right side here. I've got one for the three point and then these two are just going to be auxiliaries for running balers, hay binds, uh, any hydraulic implement. And those valves I'm waiting for in the mail, uh, just going to go right here. Coming around to the back of the machine, I put two auxiliary ports on it so I can run my round baler with it. Um, right now I just got the ports on some 90 degree elbows on this side. I think eventually what I'm going to do, I'd like to move them over to this side and uh, have a, a nicer block for them so it would be harder to accidentally loosen a fitting, but that's a project for another day. As for mounting of the controls, again. Excuse the mess, the oil got everywhere while I was building the system. I made this plate with this bar that runs up to the joystick and mounts the auxiliary valves and that just bolts up uh, sandwiches between the casing and the brake cover and then there's two bolts that run through the fender here. And this is where the toolbox usually is so I'm just moving that to my left hand side and the toolbox that was on here was so rusted out I'm just waiting for a new replacement to come and last but not least on the to-do list is uh, tidy these hoses up a bit at least one break still in the clear as always guys I appreciate you watching um, if anybody wants any more details on if I didn't go into something specific enough or you want a better view of something. I did take some video while I was putting the whole thing together. Um, maybe can get a better look at that hydraulic mount or any of the other uh, processes that went into it, I guess. I'm more than happy to share. Um, you can look at my blueprints if you want. Uh, there's definitely some stuff that I would change on this if I was going to do it over again. But by the time I realized that, I was already committed to the piece of steel I had because that stuff's pretty expensive right now. So I wasn't going to start over at that point. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching the videos. If you like what you saw, consider giving us a like or a subscribe. 
I'll see you on the next one.